Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Producing Video Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at another compression tool. This time, it's MPEG Stream Clip, which is a free piece of software that can be used to create MPEG-4 files that are compatible with video podcasting. Let's see how. Now, MPEG Stream Clip is a free piece of open source software that you can download from squared5.com. Let's go ahead over to their website really quick and check that out. And this is available for both Mac and Windows, which is nice. It's an open source product that works cross-platform. So that's always nice and often hard to find. It does specify some terms of use. So with open source software, it's a good idea to check that out. But their terms of use are very generous. And essentially, you can use this with no problem to create content, even for a commercial podcast. Once you have it, you simply drag in a file or open up QuickTime Movie. So let's just go ahead here and we'll say open and we'll go ahead and pick out a movie that we want to drop in and it brings it in. You can do a few things here. You can actually specify ins and out points if you need to. So if you want to trim the clip down, you can actually mark out a new in and an out. We can go ahead and press I to mark an in and very logically O will mark an out point. Once you've marked those ins and outs, you can go ahead and trim it by choosing Edit, Trim, or Command T, and that will actually trim between your in and out point for you. So if you've got some slop at the front of the back of your podcast that you can do a hard edit, this works fine. You're still going to want to actually edit your podcast, but sometimes what happens is you get a little bit too much black at the front or back. This lets you trim that out very easily. Now, once you've got it so you've got the points that you want, you can actually go ahead and export to a variety of formats. You can go to any QuickTime format, DV or AVI files. You can also go to an MPEG-4 format, which works very, very well. Along the way here, we can actually do some batch processing if we need to, which is a nice tool. It's very rare to find a free tool that supports batch processing. Remember, batch processing is the ability for you to load up multiple podcast episodes, set the settings, click a button, and walk away as your machine processes for several hours. I do batch processing for all video podcasts because there's too much going on in life to sit there to watch your computer crunch video down. Now, once you've got it ready, you can go ahead and submit the job. We're going to go ahead and say File Export to MPEG-4, and this will bring up a dialog box. You could specify the compression to use. Normally, you're going to use the newer H.264. This takes a little longer, but it's much more compatible with devices like the Apple iPhone and Apple TV, and it's much more common. It's actually working now with Flash and the Adobe Media Player. So stick with that H.264 unless you have a really good reason not to. Besides specifying the format, you can actually do a multi-pass. So this would often be called variable bitrate or two-pass encoding. It's what's happening here. Nice to see a multi-pass encoder included with a free software tool. And you can actually limit the data rate. Remembering, of course, that if you were going to be doing this for an iPod, it can't top out at bigger than one and a half megabits per second here. And you could find those settings over at iTunes tech spec page. If you're not sure what settings to use, just simply jump on over to Apple's website. And if you go over to the iTunes tech specs page, you'll see that they list all of the settings here. So if we just scroll down, you'll actually find data rate settings and everything else that you need to follow for a podcast. There we go. We see that if it's going to be 640 by 480, it cannot go above 3 megabits per second. So I can go ahead and push my data rate a little bit. Let's go back to MPEG Stream Clip, and we'll change this to 2.5 since we want that extra quality because of the screen captures in the podcast. That's all fine. We're going to go ahead and do stereo, auto, and 256. Adding that together, my total data rate is still below what it needs to be for the end result of the file. If I want to here, it tells me that the podcast is going to come in at about 86 megabytes. Well, this is a five-minute podcast. That's pushing it a little bit. Five minutes, 80 megabytes is much more than most people are going to want to download. So let's drop this down to two and see what it looks like. File size is getting to below 70 megabytes. That looks pretty good, so we'll try that one. We're going to go ahead and do this, and let's keep this at 640 by 480. So we're going to want to scale this down, and we'll choose Other, and we'll specify 640 by 480, which will work well for this podcast. 
Now, if there were fields, you would specify this, but there's not, so we'll just say deinterlace the video. No rotation, no zoom, no cropping. If needed, you can click presets and you'll see that they actually, you can make and store your own presets here so you can reuse them. And when you're all set, you simply click make MPEG-4. Now, if you didn't do as much correction as you wanted, you can actually make adjustments to the brightness, contrast, saturation, and volume. I often choose to use the automatic volume control. In this way, it will analyze the audio track and attempt to normalize the audio, keeping a more consistent volume throughout. Now, it's a much better idea to do that audio normalization during the video editing process by normalizing the audio in your nonlinear editing timeline. But if you forget or you still need to do it, here's another way. When you're all set, click OK and simply click the Make MPEG-4 button, specify a location, and let it rip. It's going to go ahead and do the encode, and along the way it'll tell you how much time it takes. What I like is it does a reasonably good job of giving you a time estimate of how long it's going to take to encode the clip. Now, it's telling us what's happening here. So the first thing here is passing the movie. This means it's analyzing the file. It's the first pass going through. Once that's done, it will actually start the compression. Once the compression kicks in, you'll actually see a preview over here in the preview window. And all in all, pretty straightforward. Now, watching a compression tool run is about as much fun as watching paint dry. So trust me here when I tell you it does a nice job on the compressions. You can find out more about MPEG Stream Clip over at the website, which is squared5.com. And be sure to check out this free tool. Very useful, very powerful, and will make clean MPEG-4 files for your video podcast. For Producing Video Podcast, I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and I invite you to check out our resource blog at vidpodcaster.com.